in the last video we talked about chemical equilibrium and explained how changes took place from a qualitative point of view. Clearly, they're not going to let you get away so lightly, and they're also going to expect you to work with numbers. So we need to approach it from a quantitative view as well. To do that, we have to introduce something called the equilibrium constant. If I now use my Harbour process again, nitrogen plus hydrogen makes ammonia, then we are going to write a Kc an equilibrium constant in terms of concentration for this reaction. By convention, we put products on the top of the expression and reactants on the bottom. Concentration in chemistry in Mohs per liter is expressed using a square brackets. So this is the concentration of ammonia. On the bottom, we have concentration of nitrogen times concentration of hydrogen. Now many, many experiments were done by Le Chatelier on this, and in order to get a constant value, when you started with various amounts of these, whether you started with reactants or products, in order to get the same K value every single time, no matter what you started with, no matter whether you started on this side or that side, or the quantities you started with, he only got a constant value if he did this, Put a square there and a cube there. And clearly, what works here is these stoichiometric coefficients, these numbers that we use for balancing the equation, need to then turn into powers of their concentrations in order for K to give you a constant value. Okay? Now, in the exam, they will expect you to be able to write a KC expression. They will expect you to be able to substitute in concentration values and work out Kc. They may give you Kc and ask you to work out one of those three, given the other two. Another question I've seen is where they ask you to, they give you some concentrations. They ask you to calculate something called the reaction quotient, which is effectively this expression. And then they ask you to compare that numerical value with a Kc value they will give you. And of course, if they are exactly the same, then you can conclude it's at equilibrium. However, if you find that the, the ratio of these, when you calculate that, is greater, then it means it's further to the right than it should be. And it would need to shift left in order to get to the K value that it's obviously it, it should be. Now, I'm not going to do any examples of this. I'm just showing you the kind of things they're going to ask. I'm sure you've got plenty in your, your notes, but I've also got some in my question and answer book on my website. They're there. So if you want to practice some of the KC questions, then do that. Okay. One thing I would say before we leave this video is that changing the concentration or the pressure may change the position of equilibrium, but it will not change the K value. The only thing that can change the value of K is temperature. So if you heat or cool a system, then K will change. If we go back to this process here, remember we said that it's an exothermic process in the forward direction. So for example, now let's say I heat the system. We know that when you heat an exothermic reaction, then the back reaction, the endothermic one, will be favoured, opposing the change that's been made. If you go back this way, then effectively this concentration gets less and these concentrations get more. So in this expression, K would now have a smaller value than it did before. I'm going to show you how to work out an equilibrium constant with a couple of worked examples. I'm going to use a different format because I can't get this on the whiteboard, unfortunately. So hopefully this will be a better way of showing you. Okay, so firstly, if you want to work out an equilibrium constant, you will need the equation for the reaction and you will need to know the concentration of each species in that equilibrium expression. So first worked example is calculating the value of Kc. If you are given 
the equilibrium quantities of CO2, H2, CO, and H2O, and the vessel volume is two liters. Now, this is your equation, and the Kc is the product, of course, on the top of the reactants on the bottom. All concentrations must have the power according to the number of the value in the stoic geometric equation. So in this case, obviously, they're all ones. So each concentration is to the power of one. Now then, if you are given numbers of moles and you are given a volume, then these square brackets indicate moles per liter. So you do have to change any values into moles per liter. So since this is a two liter vessel, all four of these will need to be divided by two to get their concentrations at equilibrium. So there you can see, just shown you for the first one. And the same thing was done then with the other three. So those are the concentrations. Please pause the video and check these values at any time if you need to. So we now substitute those into the equilibrium expression and the rest of it is simply calculated work. So that was a fairly straightforward example where you are given the equilibrium quantities. You did have to change them into concentrations, but really speaking, that was probably about as easy as these get. The second one I'm going to show you does not give you the equilibrium quantities. I would say these are probably the more likely questions, especially if they're going to be carrying a few more marks. So in this second one, we are given some of the initial amounts and we are given one of the equilibrium quantities. Okay, so you'll see in this one, we are mixing NO and hydrogen together. Uh, we are already given their concentrations, so we haven't got to worry about changing them from moles into a concentration. So if the NO and the H2 are given, and the H2O, which is a product, is also given. Uh, initially, there was no nitrogen, but we are told that at equilibrium, nitrogen was 0 0.019. Okay, now I'm guessing probably you've been taught the ICE method of doing these, where I stands for initial concentration, C stands for the change in concentration, and E stands for then the equilibrium concentrations. Now again, the stoichiometric, stoichiometric equation has to be written. The KC expression has to be then uh, created from that. Again, you'll notice that any powers in this expression reflect the numbers that are used in balancing in the stoichiometric equation. So again, I'm assuming this is probably going to be OK. But again, please pause and go over it if you need to. And if you have any questions or any comments, please put them in the, uh, in the comments below. OK, so. The ice chart effectively uh, give, is going to give you the initial concentrations. So initially there was 0.1 moles per liter of NO, 0.05 moles per liter of H2, 0 of nitrogen, and 0 0.1 of H2O. Now at equilibrium, we are told that nitrogen became 0 0.019 moles per liter. So if we let that value be x, then as nitrogen goes up by x, H2O will go up by 2x because the equation says so. Each of the reactants will go down by 2x. Again, you must obey the stoichiometry of the equation. So if you put those in, again, you may go straight to those values if you choose. I'm showing you what I feel is the safest way of getting these right because you're not missing any steps and you're not trying to jump any steps. Always a dangerous thing to do one stage at a time and then you won't get it wrong. So 0 0.019 is X, which means then the other values will be, as you can see there. So they're all two X's. So there's 0 0.038 of each of the reactants, which is going 
and 0.038 of the water which is forming. So with the original values, 0.1 take away 0.038 is 0.062. 0.05 take that away is 0.012. And 0.1 plus 0.038, because we're forming the water, gives us 0.138. Then again, substitute those values into the K expression.